All right, so this is a review for the set that we'll be having uh, tomorrow. If you take a look at number one, it says that we have the graph of f of x equals x squared, which is our quadratic term function. And what we want to do is we want to shift this graph three units up. And we also want to shift it five units to the right. So we're going to write an equation that has both of those transformations. So here we go. First thing you want to have is the f of x equals. First thing I want to show is moving to the right five units. So what do I need in my equation if I want to move to the right five units? Minus five. Inside or outside the parentheses? Inside. So we're going to go with a minus five inside the parentheses. That would give us the shifting right five units. Don't forget about the little two because on the test, if you forget that little two, I am going to count it wrong. That's what gives us the quadratic. That's what gives us the U shape. Now, I'm not quite done yet. I still need the up three. What am I going to put in my equation to move it up three units? A plus three. And that plus three should be outside. So this is my equation. And now I have the shifting up three units and moving to the right five. And I'm sure all of you got it right yesterday, correct? Yes. How many of you got it right yesterday? All right, number two. Number two, they're asking us, what is the effect of subtracting 3 from the x on the parent function y equals 1 over x. This, if you don't recognize, is our rational. And what they're asking us to do is subtract 3 from the x. So it looks something like this here. So the question is, what happens when we subtract 3 from the x? What direction is it going to move? What? Right. Right how many? Three. Okay, so what we're doing is we're moving to the right three units and that's because we're subtracting three from the x which is kind of like being inside the parentheses now it gets a little trickier with number three and four because i was just very generic with the equations here so on number four, uh, three it's asking us how is this h going to change the graph well first of all notice the h is inside the parentheses so if it's inside the parentheses what does it do to the graph if you're adding or subtracting inside the parentheses, it shifts left or right, depending on whether you're adding or subtracting. So I'm going to go ahead and write down that this is a horizontal shift. In other words, we're either going to move left or we're going to move right, depending on whether we're adding or subtracting. Subtracting would move it right, adding would move it left. Number four is very similar to number three. On number four, they're asking us, how is this H going to affect our parent function? What is the H going to do? Well, we're adding H inside the square root. So what happens when we add something inside? What direction are we moving? Left. In this case, how many are we moving left? H. Yeah, we're being generic here. We're going to move left. H units. In other words, if that had been a 4, we would move over left 4. If that had been a 10, we would have moved left 10. So we're moving over to left H units. All right, we're going over to the next page. It's probably one of the easiest questions we have on the test. We start off with our parent function. This is the absolute value parent function. And all I did was throw a negative sign in front of it. And what is that negative sign going to do to our parent function? Reflection. Reflect. Okay, so reflection over the x-axis. And if all you do is put reflection, we don't get crit. I want you to be specific. In this case, it's a reflection over the x-axis. We do have another that says over the y-axis. Okay, number six. We have a graph of y equals square root of x minus 6 plus 2. How is that different from the parent function? So all we're really going to do here is list what each of these is going to do to our parent function. So let's start with the minus 6. It's inside. What direction are we going to move? Right how many? 6. So we're going to move right 6. But we also have a plus 2. So what is the plus 2 going to do to the graph? Up 2. In this case, we're moving right 6, up 2. Now, just a little word of caution here, guys. A lot of times when I make this test, usually what I'll do is I'll go back 
and I'll change this simply by changing the minus to a plus, or maybe changing the plus to a minus. And a lot of times we think, oh, that's the same thing we had on the review. Well, it's not. Make sure you're reading very, very carefully. Okay. Same thing on number seven here. Take a look at number seven. I asked you for the domain of this function or this graph here. Tomorrow I may decide I want to ask you for the range. So make sure you're reading this question carefully. Now I helped you out, or I helped some of you out yesterday with this question. What I asked you guys to do was graph it for me. So if you haven't done so already, go ahead and graph that. Y equals negative 5 square root x minus 2. Make sure that minus 2 is inside the square root. And then the plus 1, make sure that's on the outside of the square root. <coughs> so the first thing we're going to do is graph it. And if we're graphing this correctly, it should look something like this right here, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? Okay. So that's the graph of negative 5 square root of x minus 2 plus 1. And what I was asking for was the domain. So I'm asking you, what are the x values on this graph that we're looking at? Well, there, there's a lot. Well, you don't have to draw the graph itself. That's not the answer. What I'm looking for is what I'm about to write over here in green. But you need the graph. All right, so here we go. I'm looking for the x values on this graph. Well, the first thing I notice is where it starts at. What is the x value on this point here? Two. So the graph is starting at the x value 2. Now notice this graph is going to the right, which means the graph or the x's are getting bigger or they're getting smaller. They're getting bigger. So if they're getting bigger, we want to say that in our answer. We want to say that the x's are getting bigger, or we can use this symbol, which means the same thing greater than. The x's are greater than the 2. But I am missing one other thing. We're going to equal. We do want to include the 2, so make sure you include the equal. Well, all the x values on this graph are greater than or equal to a 2. All right, number 8. I shouldn't have anybody miss number 8, and that's because you can use a calculator on the test. All you got to do is enter that equation in for me. Negative 2, absolute value of x minus 3, minus 1. By the way, does anybody remember how to get absolute value bar in this calculator? Um, math, math, num. And the very first one, ABS stands for absolute value. Now, I am going to be very picky, guys. If you come over here on the test tomorrow, and then you just do this for your graph, I'm not giving you credit. Because there are certain points that it should go through. And I want you to find those points with your calculator. So give me some points. Give me ordered pairs that you find in your table there. Zero, negative seven was one of them, okay? Five, negative five. Okay, one at a time. What was one? So one something? One negative five. Two. Three negative one. Three negative one. What else? Huh? Four negative three. Five negative five. Five negative five. Um, Six negative seven. Is that right? Six negative seven. There was probably a two negative three. So you get the idea here. Connect all of your dots. And that's more accurate. So I am checking for accuracy on the test. All right, let's go to the next one here. This is just the opposite of the last question. This time I give you the graph. You turn around and give me the equation that goes with this graph. First thing you have to recognize that it's a V-shape. Which of our parent function gives us a V-shape? Absolute value. That means tomorrow I'm going to give you a V-shape? Not necessarily. So make sure you know the shape of each of your parent functions. Alright, so this is the one we're going to work with here. We're going to do some adding and subtracting to move this thing around. So the question is, what direction has it moved? Our parent function has been moved. Where? Where has it been moved? Left, right, up, down. What's going on? Right three. So if I want to move right three, what do I need to put in here? Minus three, inside or outside? Inside. inside. So x minus three on the inside. What else happened besides moving to the right three? It also moved up two. So what am I going to put? 
That's right. It's also flipped upside down. That's a reflection. But what do I need in my A negative. So the equation should look like this here. Negative absolute value x minus 3 plus 2. And if you're not sure, you can always go to your calculator, enter that in, and make sure that that's the graph that you get. And that is correct. All right, number 10. It seemed like this was going to be a hard question, but it's actually pretty easy, guys. Well, number 10, they want us to consider our quadratic parent function, y equals x squared. They want us to sketch a graph of the family member that results when we take the y values and multiply them by 0.5. That's just a fancy way of saying graph this. Put a 0.5 in front of your x squared. So that's what we're doing for multiplying the y's as a function by 0.5. So just like we did earlier to make sure this is accurate, we're going to go to our calculator. We're going to go to y equals, and we're going to type this in, 0.5 x squared. And let's look at that table of values. We want to get this as accurate as possible. So give me some points. We don't have to have all of them, but we're going to have some enough to give us a, a general idea of what this looks like. I know one zero zero, but what else? Three two is another. What else? Four something. What about four four eight? Okay. Let's get some negative ones. How about negative two? Negative two two negative four eight. So that gives us a pretty good idea. Connect the dots. And I have my new quadratic. So that's the graph after we take the y values and multiply them by 0.5. All right, we're looking at number 11. For number 11, they asked us to consider the parent function y equals x squared. What would the domain and range be if the family member is translated negative 2 units? Vertical. Just so you can get the idea here. We know our parent function starts at the origin, but in this case we want to move it negative 2 vertically, meaning we want to move it down 2. So this is the graph that we're talking about. So if that's the graph we're talking about, what's the domain and what's the range? Let me start with domain. Anybody get that one already? Domain is what? All real numbers. Why? Why is it all real numbers? Yeah, because that graph continues out in both directions. It's going to continue to the left, and it's also going to continue to the right. So all real numbers. But what about range? The range is the y values. You said what greater than? Negative 2. And that's because that's where this starts at, negative 2. And they are getting bigger, so that's why we're using the greater than symbol. But we're missing one thing. Equal. Don't forget about the equal because we also want to include the negative two. So domain and range. To get full credit, you got to make sure you give me both of these. All right, number uh, 12. We got a ramp height that increases two feet for every 10 feet of its base weight. The function h equals 0.2 l represents the height of the ramp when the base is l feet long. What is the Dependence. Circle that word for me. Dependence. I may decide to change that word tomorrow, so make sure you read it carefully. Dependent. Is that the X or is that the Y? The Y. The y. Well, they didn't use the Y in this case. That's what letter did they use instead? H. H. Question is, what does that H stand for? It's the height. The height of the ramp. So in this case, our height of our ramp is going to depend on something else. And what is that something else? It would be the base one. All right, number 13. Here's an easy one. For number 13, all we're going to do is go to our calculator, and we're going to find f of negative 2. In other words, we're going to replace each of these x's with a negative 2 and see what we get. And it is important, guys, that you're using parentheses, especially on this one. Because if you don't use those parentheses, you could end up with an incorrect answer. So did somebody do that already? What are we getting for number 13? Put that in your calculator so we can see what the answer is. Was that? 24, somebody double check that one. Does that sound right? 
0.4. Ah, so F of negative 2 is equal to 24. In other words, our input was a negative 2, our output was a 24. This is our X, this is our Y. Number 14, they're asking us for the range of this graph. Range are the y values. So if I'm looking for the y values, let's look at the starting point. What's the y value on that starting point? This graph starts at what y value? Zero. Is the graph going up or is it going down? Up, which means the y values are getting bigger. So what symbol are we going to use? I use the greater there, meaning we're going to get bigger than that zero. Do I need to equal on this one? No, not this time because it's an open circle, which means we're not going to include that point. So the range would be y is greater than zero. But again, tomorrow be very careful. I may give you a different graph. I may change the word range to domain, so be extra careful. For number 15, you're given a graph of a function. By the way, how do we know that that's a function? How do you know? Because the x's aren't repeated. Now, on this function, you guys were asked to find f of negative 1. What is it? Well, remember that negative 1 is the x value. What they're asking you to do is find the y value of this graph here. So let's find negative 1 something right here. Talking about this point right here. What is that point? What is that ordered pair? Negative 1, 0. So the missing value here is 0. Alright, last question. Another easy question, I hope. Draw the quadratic turn function. We're on order now. Draw that. You first got to know what the equation is. Anybody remember the equation for the quadratic turn function? y equals x squared, x squared. So once you have that equation, you're going to go to your calculator. Put that in, because I don't want to see this. I don't want you to say, oh yeah, I remember that's a huge shape. That's not going to be good enough. We're going to go to our calculator and make sure that we have these correct points. Or, if you're really on top of your game, you also know that the y values are just the x value squared. In other words, 1, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. <coughs> you can do the same thing on the other side. Negative 1 squared is 1, negative 2 squared is 4, negative 3 squared is 9. Connect all those points. And now we have our parent function. Alright, so again, this is what the test is going to look like tomorrow. If you can handle this, we should be fine on this test. The test will be roughly about 16 questions, just like you see here. I got any questions? Everybody's going to make 100 tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. Who can guarantee me a 100 tomorrow? Yeah. Not a single person is going to guarantee me a 100. All right, just for the record, nobody said they were going to make 100 tomorrow. Anybody think they're going to make an A tomorrow? All right, we've got plenty of those. I'll take it. All right, guys?